let's introduce this guy, David Huggins. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that documentary that you did. Yeah. So David, David is a, a mild mannered, nearly 80 year old man in uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. And he claims that he has been having extraterrestrial experiences since he was, I think like nine. And once he hit 17, these experiences turned sexual. Uh, he says he lost his virginity to one of these extraterrestrials at 17. I'm glad they waited till he was somewhat <laughs> age appropriate. Um, <laughs> and, and up until probably like the, you know, this was happening in the, in the maybe the fifties or the sixties up until the eighties or nineties, he kept having these experiences and, and decided to chronicle them all through these amazing surrealistic oil paintings which he then he would finish a painting and just like put it against his wall it wasn't for anyone to see except for himself until basically i came into his life and and saw his studio with which had like 200 something of these paintings um and knew that i had to put his life to film how did you discover <laughs> him again it was i don't actually really remember it was it was maybe back in like 2000 10 or 11 or something listening to some paranormal radio show and they mentioned him offhand as as too crazy for them to even talk about so i was like well this is the guy that i i need to try and and find and and realize he had no internet presence he's never you know used the internet and doesn't have email or anything like that and i tracked down uh, his neighbor who had done a little book of his paintings which not many people had seen um and she gave me his home phone number and I called him like a cold call, and he, immediately he was just like, "Yeah, I think it's time for me to tell my story." And yeah, we had we had maybe about like ten two hour long phone calls where I got every single detail to try and figure out is this going to be worth you know me spending because years to make a documentary you know um, is this going to be worth my time? Eventually, I spent a weekend with him as an experiment. I slept in his ex wife's bedroom, whom he still lives with, but she was away on vacation. Um, and it was just like a, a weird, wild weekend. And I was like, yes, this is, this is going to work. Wow. Uh -huh. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. That's fucking <laughs> wild. I've had a couple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's so, but he's told his story. He has told his story before, right? Like with that guy, Bud Hopkins. Well, no, Bud. Was he in one of his books or he no? He wasn't. No, so, okay. No, but the Bud Hopkins book, I think it was called Intruders. That was what David, David basically, um, like a lot of alien abductees, didn't have access to all the memories. And he, he randomly found this book in the bookstore, started reading it, and there was a chapter called Other Women, Other Men that was about kind of sexual abduction experiences. Mm, yeah. And as soon as he started reading it, he said, all of the memories started to crystallize again. They all came clear, and that's when he started to paint them from memory. And he claims that he had multiple children with these alien beings, yeah. and yeah. held the children, and wanted to go. It's a fucking. It's bananas. The yeah. story. I've it gets never... more and more bananas. Yeah, the children part was, you know, because there's, you know, I've been abducted. You've heard a lot of people say say that, and maybe and maybe that's true. And then there's, you know, I had sex with aliens. That's another level of, of sort of credulity. Like, will I believe that? But then there's, I've had lots of hybrid babies <laughs> with aliens that I've seen and held and played hide and seek with on the spaceship. And it's like, wow, uh, you know, I can't really, I can't say I believe anymore. Um, but I still, I want to believe him in that something happened to him. But that detail and those details it's just like too much that's too much for me in my brain yeah to imagine maybe that's just be, you know i can't think outside the box enough for that what what was your uh, first take dealing with this guy like the first weekend you spent with him yeah. like what was your first reaction just totally disarmed by so down to earth so nice normal uh like plugged into the world, you know, like into politics and everything. Um, I would walk his street and, and meet all of his neighbors and they all loved him. They all just thought of him as like the grandpa on the street. He'd been there 30 years, go into his place of work. Like David's the best. Um, most people just didn't even know that he had had these experiences. He doesn't talk about them to, with most people. So 
I was getting this impression that that you know I maybe was going to go there thinking he's going to be unhinged in some way, but that's not the impression you get at all. And anyone that meets David is is just like wow. And then that cognitive dissonance starts to happen. You're like, well, someone that seems so normal, um, you 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 don't you're not going to write off as just crazy and he's making it up or he has paranoid delusions because that doesn't seem like what's going on and so then you really start thinking like well what could that be and then that's you know what I'm most interested in yeah yeah now <clears throat> his massive collection of supernatural sci-fi movies on VHS <laughs> did, did his obsession with the, these paranormal sci-fi movies start before he these these things happened to him before he started telling the stories, or at what point? Because I, I in the documentary, you make the connection, or, or one of the guys you're interviewing makes the connection, saying that these experience, these real life experiences that people have, directly affect these science fiction stories, and then it's like a it's a cycle, and then the science fiction stories affect the the more real life situations people say they encounter. Yeah. So. Do you know, do you have like a timeline of when he became, started collecting all these movies and becoming obsessed with them? Yeah, so so what's interesting is that seemed to happen later, you know, just like in the 80s when he started collecting them. But he early on was that movie, did you ever see John Carpenter's The Thing, the 80s one? Where yeah, it's, it's like Kurt so Russell yeah. and it's like just these horribly disgusting like alien monsters. Well, the, the first version of that, the original version of that, came out the year that he had his first encounter and so or he watched it around that time you know probably in the theater or something mm -hmm. um and so there's these things you know i'll hear things like that and it, and, it, and it's like well maybe then that's in your brain and and maybe you still had an experience but you're like mapping on things that you're seeing but but still back in you know in the I guess in the 50s and the 60s, that was kind of a UFO mania too. Like there was like reports of UFOs over the White House. Yeah. And, you know, um, he probably, because there was no internet, he probably had very little exposure to this stuff, but it was still there and around. And especially when he started remembering most of it, that's in the 80s. And that's like, you know, prime UFO time. Yeah, a lot, a lot of his story and a lot of his drawings are very similar to a lot of other really popular yeah. events and he doesn't have access to the internet so how would he know right yeah uh i don't know how much of of that imagery he'd i get the gray definitely i think everyone had seen but mm -hmm. insectoid beings um, praying mantis yeah yeah and and the tall people the alien women those seem pretty unique he did see like a he had mentioned like in a doctor who episode that he saw that that he had mentioned he saw it and he was like oh that's weird i'm it's like i'm having a memory and i watched it and it's like these giant ants like these ant people mm -hmm. that sort of look like his praying mantis and so again it might be that that he had these experiences and then he saw these these mantoid beings and they remind him of him or he saw those and he's like oh i had you know yeah mapping that onto in his own brain yeah, yeah, it's it also reminds me of the Travis, the whole Travis Walton story as well. Right. Yeah. Like, like with the human slash alien hybrids. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Which was very odd. Uh huh. And more terrifying. Like David, the Travis Walton story is like truly terrifying, and David is just like, oh, I had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>